Um, my name is Rachel Single, and I teach printmaking here at the University of Louisville. Today we're going to talk a little bit about screen printing and how uh, it's done. So uh, and hopefully we'll give you more insight into Andy Warhol's process. So we're going to start by how to code screen, how to expose a screen, and then a little bit of printing. So let's get started. Okay, so we are now in a light safe room um, where there are no UV rays. So this is where we're gonna be coating our screen. Um, right here we have emulsion, which is uh, has a light sensitive um, uh, substance in it. Uh, we're gonna start by pouring it into a scoop coater. And this scoop coater, we are going to use to put the emulsion onto our screen. If you are doing this at home, you can apply the emulsion directly to the screen and then coat a thin layer with a credit card, for example. But the scoop coater is a more efficient way of doing this. We're gonna start by pouring it slightly forward at a 45 degree angle, letting a small bead form, and then pulling it up, pulling it back, and then I'm going to get all the excess up here, and I'm going to do it a little bit more on this side to get all of the screen. and get all of that excess. And you can coat the back as well, um, but I'm just gonna coat that one side. Now I wanna let it dry in front of a fan, which is gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll be ready to expose it in the exposure unit. Okay, while our screen is drying, we can work on mixing up our inks. To do that, um, we have uh, our ink, as well as acrylic extender base. Um, and that's, we're also gonna use some transparent base um, because the goal for today is to recreate uh, Andy Warhol's The Last Supper. And uh, I was looking at his image and the colors have uh, a bit of a transparent quality. So, uh, so that's why we got that out. Um, as well as black um, because Andy Warhol's uh, piece, Andy Warhol made a photo stat um, of Rudolf Stang's reproduction. So, uh, so that's why we have uh, that. Um, so when we expose the, the piece in there, um, I created a couple of different shapes uh, that are gonna represent our colors. But all of these pieces have to be black, okay? Okay, because the color is gonna come in later. When we expose in there, Everything has to be completely black. There can be no light that comes through. I painted each of these with India. When I hold them up to the light, I can't see any light coming through. In the exposure unit, UV light is gonna shoot up from the bottom with the light sensitive emulsion. Anything that is soft, is going to wash out in, 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 uh, in the sink. Anything that the UV light hits is gonna remain hard. That is what is gonna create our stencil. So we can create the stencil using inkjet ink, using the India ink, using paint markers, any way that we can get a pure black and, um, and these I drew on vellum, but you can also draw on a tr transparency. Ultimately, you want complete black or clear to create that stencil. So um, again, mixing up our colors, I just combined water-based ink with a mixture of extender base, a ratio about one to three, you know, one part extender, two parts ink, as well as some transparent base to my colors to get um, the opacity that I wanted. So mixing up my inks, while that's drying, let's go see if it's dry yet, okay? 
Okay, so our screen is dry. And so what I've done is I have taped uh, our pieces to the, to the glass here so that they don't move. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the screen down on the glass and make sure that everything is on there. Now, everything, the way that it looks underneath the screen is the way it's gonna print. So unlike a lot of things in screen print or, or in printing in general, it's, it's not gonna be in reverse. It's gonna be print exactly the way it looks. I'm so gonna I take this piece of rope and put it inside the screen. The reason I need to do that is because when I close the top of the exposure unit and I latch it, I'm gonna turn on a vacuum. And that vacuum is going to start sucking air out of here. I'm going to set my timer to about 55 seconds. That 55 seconds will give me enough light that it will harden the area around those little dots, but not start to harden that area where there's all that wood. So let's do it go. So there's UV light coming up from the bottom now and hitting that green emulsion wherever there's not black. And then it's hardly no hair. Alright, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off our vacuum and we're gonna roll on clamp it. But 
We'll pour first and then we'll be printing on our acetate and then we'll be lining up our paper to see where we're gonna be printing. So I'll explain that in just a minute, but let's, uh, let's get started. All right, so we have our ink here. And we have our palette. So we're gonna put a little bead here at the top could be pretty generous. In terms of consistency, you want your ink, you know, to be, you know, a little bit thicker than mustard, maybe. That's a good way to describe it, I think. Okay. And before we print, you want to do what's called flooding. So we're gonna flood the, the surface there, and then we're gonna put it down. And I have these for underneath here. And then run it over top of that. And then right when I'm done, I'm gonna go back over top and flood it again to keep it from drying more. Right, I'm gonna put this over to the side. And it looks pretty good. So I'm going to put it down again, and my acetate is underneath. And I have my squeegee. And it's always good to have a squeegee with a nice 90 degree angle because that's going to give you a pretty good, good uh, print. If it gets to be too curved, it can start to um, sometimes compromise your, your uh, image. So we're going to Hold down at a 45 degree angle, applying firm pressure. And don't forget to flood. And it's hard to tell from where you are, but I have my image on my acetate. And now what I can do, now that I have my image on that acetate, is take my paper and I can slide it underneath and position my paper where I want that on my image. Or where, you know, I can, I can see where my print is and put the paper there. And now I want to flip that acetate to the side. And now my paper's exactly where I want it to be. And I put it, can put my screen down again. And this is, this is the moment. Take my ink and my squeegee and burn pressure, 90 degrees. Running it over top and flood. First print. Now I'm going to print a few more of these with my orange color and then I'll be ready to do my next color. Alright? Good. And 
to make sure I have my paper position where I want it. And I've looked at the image uh, of the Last Supper and looks the way that I want it. So I'll take the plastic out, put this down. Remember to flood my image and apply pressure at 45 degrees. Always flood, lifting back up so it doesn't dry out. Let's move it down, and there we go. Okay, so um, I finished my piece, um, my replica of Andy Warhol's The Last Supper. And in terms of um, assessing my results, um, I think I probably would have made the dark image maybe a little bit uh, lighter. Um, in terms of the transparency and probably in terms of mixing up my color maybe made the purple a little bit darker but um, but but yeah overall I think um, in terms of printing um, I'm happy with my registration um, but but yeah that's just all uh, in terms of uh, assessing one's results um, but I appreciate you all being here today um, to uh, to learn a little bit about screen printing and Andy Warhol's process um, yeah, Andy Warhol saw uh, himself as a machine in terms of a screen printer, and uh, and yeah, we made a quite a large addition, and so uh, so yeah, that's that. Uh, I think we uh, were like Andy Warhol in that sense today, and uh, and I had a lot of fun, and uh, I I hope that um, you guys did too. So thank you so much for your time.